Jeffrey Hatcher's adaptation is a modern retelling or contemporary retelling of the Robert Louis Stevenson's uh, strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And whereas Robert Louis Stevenson had uh, the, an investigation of uh, what predates modern psychology, the nature of man and his investigation between Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the civilized British gentleman with the a uh, brutal, uh, bestial nature of man's uh, primal instincts and his investigation of how we got from there to high culture. Uh, Hatcher's adaptation is really looking at, in our subconscious, the variety of personas that we're capable of uh, in our nature and our instincts in investigating this. Another difference is that in this production, or in this um, adaptation, he's introduced a female character, which was not in the original production, or in the original story. And this creates an interesting love triangle between Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, and Elizabeth. I play Elizabeth Jelks, who is the ch a chambermaid at the Charing Cross Hotel. And through a series of events, um, she meets Edward Hyde and becomes involved with him. And that starts to concern Dr. Jekyll, because he can't remember who Elizabeth is or what Hyde has done to her. He just knows there's an Elizabeth, so then that creates some problems there. Jekyll's a brilliant scientist. Um, it's just that his passions have gotten away from him and his experiments have gotten away from him. It's um, taken him to a different place and it's not a place he returns from, ultimately. It's an ongoing process, and, and it's part of what I enjoy most about doing the work, because there's always a different viewpoint or um, something else to discover. Personally, I love playing multiple characters. I think that's, um, that's one of the most fun things about this business, being able to play um, a lot of different characters in a night. Uh, last year we had Almost Maine where we played four or five characters, and, and that was fun, but I even like this kind of better because you, I mean, in one stretch of the script here, I play one character, one line, turn around, play another character in the next line, and then turn around and play another character in the next line. So three lines in a row, nobody else speaking, me changing characters. So I love that, I think that's fun. It's kind of hard to keep it all straight in your brain there for a little while, and you have to really, con really concentrate on the the significant differences between the people, their physicalities, their uh, vocal intonation, their vocal patterns, um, all that kind of stuff, so their histories. Three different characters or multiple characters, you have an opportunity to, opportunity to uh, put them against one another, if you will, um, and, and, and you're forced to come up with differences between the three different characters. Um, in this case, my one character is a dandy, and another character is uh, very much a murderous villain, and the other character is a, a pompous uh, know-it-all. The show is a very ensemble-driven piece, uh, six actors, and told in a way that people aren't going to be expecting. Not a straightforward, completely linear telling, but a very, not really abstracted, but interesting way. Well, specifically for Jekyll and Hyde, um, actually it was just reading the script uh, that uh, the idea just came out of nowhere. Um, I, knew this, I knew the set design had to be a, a simple design, uh, abstract design, and uh, uh, I, kind of, I kind of boiled it down to one element. Uh, Dr. Jekyll is, you know, he's, he has a laboratory and and uh, and I just I just kept reducing it and reducing it until uh, I just came up with the idea of, of glass bottles hanging in a black space. What I'm trying to do is uh, on the sound design side by the sound. Uh, the design uh, focused on a lot of ambient elements to try and establish place within the context of the play. We have a fireplace um, that you hear in uh, Jekyll's study. 
um, gas jets in the city morgue, um, uh, the sound of canal, uh, a canal near Hyde's apartments. Um, <clears throat> so like the set, which was sparse and suggestive, again, I was going for sound design elements, which were in uh, Victorian times, the style of acting was slightly different than what we're accustomed to now. And I was interested in investigating the style and amplifying the style that Hatcher has written into the script. It, uh, there's much more passion and energy and drive that I wanted us to explore beyond what we're accustomed to with watching television and sense of modern realism and those techniques of acting. I suppose the most interesting thing for me about the show is that the entire cast has all worked together almost annually on Christmas Carol. So we keep kind of telling all of these Christmas Carol jokes that keeps kind of sneaking in <laughs> to the rehearsal process. And the characters, I mean, we're, even the costumes are similar to our Christmas Carol costumes in, in some parts. Uh, I, first of all, I really love working with the ensemble here because there's a great chemistry that the company has and also infusing the company with new blood and working with new actors. Uh, and bringing them into the style that uh, Maryland Ensemble Theatre works. Uh, I really love that, uh, the unity and, and uh, community that you have developed here.